Whether it's because of inflation or because I've just straight up found a better alternative, there are a lot of items that I don't buy anymore or ways that I've changed my buying behaviors. The first way is I no longer go and shop at premium grocery stores. If you have a look at my fridge, I've still got produce, I've got condiments, I've got pop, I've got all the things I need. I'm just buying them from a discount grocer now and if there's something special that I need like beautiful produce, well, I know where to go and get that and I'm happy to spend my money on that. But for the everyday essentials, I'm going to the basic store. There are maybe one or two times in my life that I can think of where someone brought me back a souvenir that was actually awesome like the time my nephew went to Japan. But aside from that, rarely do you ever get a good souvenir. Now, if you're somewhere and you see something that's utterly amazing and reminds you of the place that you're traveling and feels so special, so meaningful, something you have to have, fine, pick it up. But no longer am I going out and buying things for family members and friends when I'm traveling. They don't need it. I don't need to make the room. I don't need to waste the money. People can just look at pictures, smile, and move on. I'll always need to buy replaceable blades, but I'm not buying any disposable razors anymore. I'd say about five or six years ago now, I got this razor blade. It's beautiful. It was a little bit of an investment, but I have to say it feels good. It's great to use, and I no longer have to waste money on disposable razor blades. There are so many reasons why I don't buy candles anymore. First of all, they are really expensive. Like where do they get the nerve charging $50 for a candle. Second of all, I think the smells that come from candles, they can kind of take over your whole space and you can't really control or dose the scent. And finally, it's a safety issue. Having a lit candle, having a little too much wine or forgetting about it, like it's just not good. Especially because we have a little girl at home and who knows, who knows? You just, you always wanna keep your eye on an open flame. So several years ago, Chad picked up all of these LED candles, you know, the kind of cute ones that they have at restaurants. You get a little remote control, you can set a timer, you can control how they flicker, you can do all kinds of cool things, but the great part is you can turn them off, you can turn them on, you never have to worry about fire. You just have to worry about batteries. I get it, you might not have a green thumb. And if that's the issue, I have several videos on plant maintenance that you can check out down below. But having a fake plant in your home, well, they're expensive. Good quality fake plants, they don't come cheap. Second, they're bad for the energy of your home if you care about that kind of stuff. Third, in my opinion, they look a little cheesy. They're very obvious. So one thing we have never bought and I will never buy are fake plants. And that extends to flowers too. It feels like you can get an extended warranty on a jar of peanut butter these days. It feels like every time I check out, I get offered the option to add an extended warranty. And for my Apple laptop, for my kitchen appliances, for my car, yeah, an extended warranty makes sense. But for basic things that, let's be honest, we know are built to be obsolete in a couple of years, why am I buying an extended warranty? It's a well-known fact that if you're at a retail store and you buy an extended warranty, the majority of that fee goes to the guy or gal who sold you the warranty in the first place. So just say no, unless it's a major investment. On rare occasions, I'm talking once or twice a year, I will have to buy something for my daughter that's brand new. Now this excludes shoes. I tend to buy her new shoes. I'm happy to invest that money. Aside from that, Kids' clothes gets ruined, goes to school, goes to camp, goes to after-school activities, gets paint, dirt, glue, you name it, all over it. Sometimes clothes end up in the garbage. Sometimes they can't control their bowels and, well, you're not cleaning that. So that's why I found a group of people who I can get hand-me-downs from. And secondly, I go to secondhand shops for kids clothes. A lot of people are turned off by this, but let me tell you, like I got these leggings from a secondhand shop here called Once Upon a Child. I wanna say I paid three bucks for these and they are gap leggings that were in near new condition. So it's not like you're going to secondhand stores and buying stuff with holes in it. They only take great quality stuff. I see no reason to spend good money on brand new kids clothes, especially knowing how quickly they grow out of it 
and their propensity to ruin things. Now, if you have trouble finding a group of people to get hand-me-downs from, you can go on online marketplaces. There are lots of local Facebook groups, whether they're mom's groups or buy nothing groups, where you can get things either for free or at a very, very reduced price from someone who is very happy to declutter their home and hand their stuff off to someone who has a great use for it. With a very creative five-year-old at home and an equally as creative 46-year-old dad at home, I can tell you that there is an insatiable appetite for crafts here in this house. Now crafts, especially craft kits, are quite expensive. So that's why I recommend, first of all, looking at what you have at home already and using that to make your stuff. Second of all, if you are gonna buy crafts, don't go and buy those expensive craft kits. We don't. We just buy the bulk stuff, the basic stuff. We kind of piece things together and you let the imagination fly. It's cheap and it works. We do not spend our money on paper napkins anymore. For years, we have been fans of reusable napkins. And as some of you might know, recently we came up with our own reusable napkin at Makers Clean. This is a large waffle weave napkin. It's made out of microfiber. It feels great. It's reusable, it's dark so it won't show stains. It's very easy to wash and it looks good wash after wash without showing wrinkles. There are so many reasons why not spending another dollar or quarter on, on single-use napkins are important. There are plenty of reasons why you shouldn't be spending your money. There are plenty of reasons why you shouldn't be using reusable. There are plenty of reasons why you shouldn't be using disposable napkins. Of course, they are wasteful, but you waste money on them as well. So rather than doing that, just invest in good quality napkins and wash them hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and watch the savings roll in. Small kitchen appliances. That is something I don't like to spend money on anymore. The last time I did, I invested in this food processor extension piece for my stand mixer. And let me tell you, I spent good money on it. I was very excited. Then I started to use it. I realized how cumbersome it was, how little time it actually saved me. And this thing is huge. It takes up so much space in my drawer. So this is what I've realized. Am I surviving right now without that new small appliance? Yes, I am. And quite frankly, it's not like I'm gonna start cooking more or make significantly more exciting things if I have that new small appliance. I am fine now, I'll be fine a year from now with the same stuff I have in the kitchen. And if there's really something that I want, what I've learned is that I can probably go on an online marketplace and find the thing I'm looking for from someone else who probably got it as a wedding gift and never opened it and just has to dust it off but the thing is brand new. This might come as a shock to you because I am a YouTuber, but believe it or not, I don't buy seasonal decor for my house because it's a waste of money. And also, people buy these things and then they get sick of them and they want a new thing for Thanksgiving 2024. Like what, what you used in Thanksgiving 2022 wasn't good enough? So I save my money on seasonal decor items. I only buy, let's call them investment pieces. Good furniture, beautiful pieces that I can keep on display year round that I love, that I'm not gonna get sick of. And if for whatever reason I am over that piece, I will list it online and I will only buy something if I absolutely love it and I can see a place for it at home already. For a very brief period of time, I would use makeup remover wipes after a day of filming, which is pretty much the only time I wear a full face of makeup. However, they are wasteful and they are expensive. So instead, I use a reusable face cloth. These are also by Makers Clean. This is our luxury face towel. This has probably been washed, I don't know, hundreds of times at this point. Uh, I will either use it with a little bit of my face cleanser or if I'm removing eye makeup, I put a bit of micellar water on here. Then I just wipe off my face, I'll rinse with water and these just wash beautifully. They feel so soft on my skin and of course they're reusable. They don't end up in the garbage and that's a good thing. Buy once, buy well. 
I don't spend any money on things that make my house smell better. I used to use essential oil diffusers and honestly, I don't even use those now. I rely upon what you see right here. Plants, windows, and what you don't see, my air purifier. Those three things help make my home smell like nothing. And guess what? If there's this smell emanating from the house and I can't quite figure out what it is, well, it's my job to figure out what it is so that I can remove it at the source and get rid of that odor once and for all. The reason I don't spend money on making my house smell better is because these are the things that make my house smell better. No candle or air freshener or spray is ever going to make it smell as good as fresh. I do not buy fabric softener and I do not buy dryer sheets. Instead, I have these dryer balls. I've got plastic for synthetic material and wool for natural material. And I also buy fabric rinse. Fabric rinse is entirely different from fabric softener. You don't need nearly as much and it does an amazing job at getting the final rinse phase of your wash cycle to help eliminate any excess odors, stains, or detergent buildup, as opposed to fabric softener, which kind of adds a conditioner. For me, I've always found fabric softener not to be a crucial part of my laundry routine, so I've never really spent money on it. And dryer sheets, I mean, these can basically do everything a dryer sheet can, but this is something that I actually do think is worth spending money on. We love getting gifts in this house, not only because, well, it's fun to get gifts, but also because we get free wrapping supplies. In fact, in this box, we've kept the best tissue paper boxes and gift bags so that in the event we have a gift to give, we go right to the source and pull something out. I cannot remember the last time I bought a piece of tissue paper or a gift bag, because we are just getting a constant supply every time we get a gift. Now, one thing I will say, there is one exception. When wrapping paper goes on sale, I will swoop in and buy some every now and then, especially if it's holiday themed or birthday themed. But aside from that, yeah, I've given up on wasting my money on that stuff. There's no point. Something that I've really had to quell and it bubbled up during the pandemic was boredom buying. So I had nothing to do. I was on my laptop. I had already reached the bottom of the internet. It was time for retail therapy. And I noticed that I started to buy things that I didn't necessarily need, namely clothes. Cause like who was going out and wearing anything nice during the pandemic. So what I've done, whether it's for clothing or other items is now I keep a tab open, I fill a cart and I go back a couple of times and I really mull over the decision. So it takes away that impulsivity from the purchase. And if something's on sale, sometimes I say to myself, it's a really good deal, but could that 40 bucks do better in my bank account? Could I invest it? Could I dedicate it to something else like my mortgage instead of buying that $40 sweater that used to be 60 bucks, whatever the case may be. The point is that when you buy things, when you're bored, you tend to waste money. If you are interested in the Maker's Clean reusable napkins or the luxury face cloths, I've got a link for you down below, or you can visit makersclean.com. And I wanna know in the comments down below, what are items or an item that you don't buy anymore? And for what reason? Let me know, I'm curious. Maybe I'll stop buying it too. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.